Today we're going to be talking about creating an annual task sheet. And this sounds like it might be a lot, <laughs> but I guarantee it is going to give you so much peace of mind when we get into this. So we're not going to delay, we are going to dive right in. You're probably going to want to grab a pen and paper for this one. Are you ready to stop the chaos, the stress, the overwhelm that's filling your life? I'm Renee Matt, and together you and I are going to build simple routines that are going to change your life. When you put these habits into practice, you're going to be able to organize your life in a way where you can be there for your family, pay off your debt, save money, your house can stay organized, you don't have to stress about what's for dinner, and you still get time for yourself. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to the Routine Advantage Podcast. This is a really fun episode. I'm excited to talk about this one. Um, when I talk about annual task sheets, it is something that is going to coincide with your daily schedule template and your planning process. So I've shared before that my planning day is on Fridays. I love taking a Friday morning, early in the morning, I grab a cup of coffee and I sit down with my Google Calendar and my paper planner and I plan out my following week. During that time, I take my daily schedule template that has all of my temp or my time blocks and my day stacks of what works best for me and I compare the two. And I walk you through this in a lot of my previous episodes. So if you want to go back and listen to those, they're all free on the podcast. Uh, if you want to walk through this more visually. I also have the process of creating the five foundational routines and then how to create that daily schedule template into a weekly schedule template in my workbook. It's Your Organized Life Blueprint and you can get that at yourorganizedlifeblueprint.com. However, before we continue, there is a way that you can win it. Um, we are doing a listener review giveaway right now so from now until the end of February, you have the chance to leave a review or share your favorite episode through text, on social media, through email, however you want. Share it with a friend and screenshot it or leave your review and screenshot it. Then you can come to our free community and go to facebook.com slash groups slash the routine advantage community and go to the pinned post at the top of the group. It talks about the listener review giveaway that's going on right now. All you have to do is drop your screenshot in the comments of that post and you are entered. And we are going to draw a winner to get your organized life blueprint completely free as a gift to you. So hopefully you can win that. But when we are talking about the daily schedule template and planning out the week, the goal is to actually create routines that you can stack within your day that are completely customized to you and your life and what works for your schedule. And that is the benefit of creating routines is being able to get really organized and be able to be productive while also saving time and actually opening up space in your week. We are also looking at priority tasks. You already have most of it taken care of in your routines, but there are always like the added things that aren't necessarily in our specific routines. And where these come in are our priority tasks. And we want to keep these to a very limited number. I try and only do three a week and sometimes I will do more but I would definitely recommend trying to keep it under five and these are like your bigger tasks of wanting to accomplish things and I actually have a, a, an example of trying to do more than the five. There was a week that was fairly recent. I think this was probably like three weeks ago. I kind of got ambitious because I've been really good about accomplishing all of my, you know, three big priority tasks every week. And so I got ambitious and I wrote down, I think I wrote down like seven or eight of these priority tasks. And guess how many I accomplished that week? I don't even know if I accomplished one. I think I half did one. 
But the whole week, I just kept thinking like, oh, I need to do these. Oh, I need to do these. And it just got, it was so overwhelming because I knew I didn't have the time to accomplish all of them. And I didn't know which one to start first. And it was just this pressure to try and accomplish all of these tasks that were on my sheet and it was started to feel more like that to-do list and then the more I didn't do them the more I felt like a failure and it was just so much pressure and I realized I'm like that is how I felt I it kind of came back to me it's like that's how I felt when I was using to-do lists all the time I just always felt behind and I'm like okay that just like reiterates to me that I have to keep my priority tasks minimal because I'm actually more productive and I get more accomplished when I am more realistic about the time that I have available. My life is busy. We have so much going on that we're trying to accomplish. Our weekends are always booked. Like we do have a very limited amount of time to get all these extra things done. So I have to be honest with myself on what I can actually do so I'm not always feeling like I'm behind. And this is the best way that I have found. So if you're feeling this way, this is a really good way to just help ease the pressure is to make sure that you go and you set up your five foundational routines. I think that's where you have to start is setting up those five foundational routines and you can go back into the podcast and look at those. You can also get the blueprint however you need to, but your five foundational routines are your morning routine, your meal planning routine, your daily seven home routine, your movement routine, and then your budget routine. When you get these five areas, you feel so much more organized, but then we're also going to have those other tasks that are not within these five core routines. So the annual task list is where this comes in. These are your annual tasks that might be once a year, it might be multiple times a year, that doesn't really matter so much, but more than anything, it's getting onto paper or onto a spreadsheet or wherever it works best for you, all of your additional tasks that need to be done so that you don't always have to keep them in the back of your mind thinking, okay, when do I need to do this? What am I forgetting? Where, when does this need to be done? Oh my gosh, like this is, this has to be done. And all these different things of being pulled in all these directions, when you have it all centralized into one list, you know exactly when it needs to be done. So what I want you to do is grab a piece of paper. I want you to grab highlighters if you can. Uh, a pen or a pencil, whatever works for you. If you're not a paper person, then, you know, pull out an Excel spreadsheet or a Google sheet, however you want to do it. I'm typically a Google Sheets person. I love Google and I love spreadsheets. But because I have been using my paper planner so consistently, we have these blank pages in the back that I have been just taking my time to decorate with like washi tape and highlighters and stickers. And I'm getting all crazy. It's like turning into this, you know, almost more of like a scrapbook (laughs) than just a straight paper planner. Like I'm having fun just getting creative with it. But that is what I did. I chose to take, you know, a completely blank um, spread and uh, make this grid and everything and I chose to do it on paper. If it's easier for you to do it on the computer because you just don't have time to sit and do this, I do it really early in the morning with coffee, but if you um, don't have time to sit and do this, then a spreadsheet will work just fine or even just a blank sheet of paper that you just write these out. It does not have to be fancy. If you want it to be fancy, it can be, but it doesn't have to be. And maybe even just draft something first and then decide later if you want to, you know, make it prettier, then you can do it that way. But the main thing is just getting the information out. So the first thing I want you to do is no matter what you're using to do this, I want you to start by kind of separating the page into a grid. So you're going to first create one column that is decently wide. You're going to kind of write phrases here. So you're going to write one column that is pretty wide. And then the next 
columns, you're going to do 12 columns that just need to be little box, like check boxes. So you'll have a wide column for your list, and then you'll have 12 little check boxes from left to right beside that. So what this is going to do at the top of that wide column, you are going to write your annual tasks or your chores or just straight tasks, however you want to do it. I call mine the annual task sheet. And then above each of the remaining 12 columns, you're going to write a J for January, F for February, M for March, all the way through from January to December. And then once you do this, you now have your opportunity to create your list. And you are going to think of absolutely everything you can possibly think of. This is going to be from cleaning your ceiling fans to washing your windows, wiping out windowsills, um, flipping your mattresses, uh, wiping down baseboards, shampooing your carpets, uh, washing your pillows, rearranging the or reorganizing your linen closet, cleaning out your utility room, uh, dusting the entire house if that's something that needs to be on your annual task list. It has to be on mine because I don't do that every day. <laughs> it has to be something that I remember to do because I hate it so much. Um, it's like cleaning your oven, sweeping under your appliances, uh, cleaning the hood vents and the filters over your oven range. It might be checking your smoke detector uh, batteries. It might be uh, cleaning your dryer vents or checking your furnace filters or uh, washing your light fixtures. It's all of these extra things that are on our plates that we are always needing to do, but we always feel like it's just another thing that we have to do. I want you to think of everything and just write it down your list. And once you think that you have a pretty good solid list done, then you are going to start highlighting the boxes of the months that you want to complete these. Now, this is not a set in stone. These are your goal months. And so start at the very top and decide how often do you want to do this. So if your first one is to clean your ceiling fans, you need to decide how often realistically do you think that you want to clean your ceiling fans? Is it every month? Is it every other month? Is it once a year? Whatever it is, Take your highlighter and then highlight the box of the month you want to complete that project. And then you're just going to go down your whole list and highlight the boxes of when you want to complete each thing. Now, this, like I said, is not set in stone. This is just your goal. And as you get through your list, you have it all highlighted so that every time you sit down to plan out your week, when it's the last week of the month, what you're going to do is you're going to go to your annual task list. And what I like to do is because I use the paper planner, I actually have, um, I didn't know they made these, but I found them on one of my more recent shopping trips, but they make uh, transparent post-it notes. And I don't think it's the post-it note brand. Maybe you can get them in post-it note brand, but uh, they're just transparent notes that have the little sticky back and you're able to write on them but then you can put them over the top and you can stick them on your paper planner wherever you want and it's this like clean list but you're not actually writing on the page so you can lift it and move it wherever you need to but it's not covering anything else underneath it which I think is really cool. So I have those and so I'm we're getting close to the end of February here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and take my post-it note and I'm going to flip to that page to look at my annual task list and I'm going to write out all of my March tasks that I have highlighted. And then from there, I'll put it in my month spread in my paper planner so I know all of the March tasks that I need to do. And then what I'm going to do is each Friday when I look at my plan for the following week, all I have to do is look at that March list and I have to pull three to five priority task items that I'm going to focus on that week. 
So you really want, as you're like doing your annual task list, you want to spread it out as much as you can to not put, you know, so much into the same month. You want to try and evenly spread them as if you can. But especially if it's just you completing these, if you have family members that are also completing some things, then great. <laughs> Let them do some of them and then you don't have to have it all on your own. But that is how I have been doing it and it has worked so well. But I have to be honest with myself and I have to keep my expectations to three to five because otherwise it's just too overwhelming. And I know if I keep it to three to five, I will actually accomplish them because it doesn't feel like such a huge task to complete. And one of the other things that I have been finding that is super helpful is getting it outside of my paper planner as well. So once I decide what I'm going to do for that week, we have a little like whiteboard on our fridge. Like it's just this it's like this little rectangular marble looking whiteboard. I think I got it from Target for like seven or eight dollars. And we have that on our fridge. And then on that fridge, we put priority tasks and I write down what I have in my paper planner so that not only I keep it front and center, but then also Tony knows what I'm also trying to accomplish because some of them also involve him. So he needs to be aware of what we are looking to accomplish to stay on track with trying to keep up with all of the house projects. And he even went through some of these with me. Like I was trying to brainstorm and I started asking him, like, what are things on your plate that you take care of that you don't want to forget? And it was kind of funny because he said that he already has them plugged into his Google calendar on when he needs to check certain things or do things. So he's already got that taken care of. But I wanted to get them on my list too so that I was also aware of it. But it's just been a really good way of doing this and one optional thing you totally don't have to do this but I thought it was kind of fun was to kind of categorize them as well so when I was highlighting everything I kind of took three different color highlighters and when I was marking off those boxes I did orange for all the cleaning and organizing tasks I did blue for any home care or maintenance tasks and then I did green for any outside or exterior tasks or in just in the general like other category. So those were green. And you don't have to do it that way. I just thought it was fun because it was kind of colorful and categorized and it just made it a little bit more fun to do. And once you actually complete one of the tasks, then you're going to go and just take a pen or a pencil or whatever you do and you just mark the X in the month that you completed it. So now, not only do you have your whole plan for the whole year of your goal times to get these things done, you also have a history of when you've actually completed these things. So you can go back and look, and then when you're ready to make next year's task list, you can kind of go off of when you actually were able to accomplish things, then you might want to adjust your goal times of when you're gonna do it next year. And then you never have to worry about forgetting to do something or losing track of it or not knowing when you're going to get to it because you already have it planned out. So you can stop worrying about it. You already know when you're going to do it. So all you have to do is focus on just making sure that you are planning ahead for each week so that you remember to actually take a look at this and see what is coming up for the following month and then divide it up into your weeks when you are setting up your priority tasks for each week. So I hope this was helpful and kind of gives you some encouragement to be able to get organized and feel like you have a little bit more breathing room because you don't have to worry about when these things are gonna get done and you start to feel a little bit more organized on keeping track of everything that has to be done. And I want to just encourage you to give yourself a breather. <laughs> everything can be very overwhelming and that's not how we want to live our lives. And each step you take is going to help get you 
even more organized and before you know it, you're going to have this full system set up in your life where each area that seems overwhelming now becomes more systematic and has a go-to routine to help you to be able to move through all of your responsibilities with more ease, with more organization, and with more enjoyment. Did you love that episode or learn something useful? If so, would you do me a huge favor? My goal is to grow this podcast and help as many women as I can break free from the overwhelm so they can truly enjoy their life. The best way for me to do this is for you to leave a five-star written review on your podcast app and to share this episode with a friend or in your Instagram stories. I appreciate you being here. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you on the next episode. Take care.